Here is a question. When you see this pattern shape, this is a front bodice, it's cut on the center front fold, and there's one dart in it. Can you visualize what your fabric would look like when you sew it up? So take a minute, try to visualize it, maybe even sketch it. So this is the front bodice um, cut out of fabric and sewn up. So is this what you visualized where the center front fold goes down center front and then you have a dart at a slight angle uh, next to it? My next question is, can you, if this, if your darts are moved so that the darts are actually at a slant and the darts meet at the bottom of your center front, can you then imagine what shape your pattern would look like? The dart definitely wouldn't be here, it would be moved. Can you envision of what shape you think your pattern would look like? For notebook sample number three, we are going to move our dart so that it is placed at the center front waist. So basically we'll start with our basic sloper where our dart is, it's at the waist but it's not at the center front waist. And we're gonna move this dart so that it is closed at the corner here at the waist. This line right here represents where the dart was, um, but when we cut this out of fabric, we won't use that line at all. Um, and these would be our sew lines. We would sew these dart legs together so that when we're finished, our dart will end up at the center front waist, okay? There are two different techniques to move darts around. Um, the first one we're going to do is called slash and spread. The other one we'll learn about later is called the pivotal turn method. But today we're going to start with slash and spreading. Um, this is really handy if you have a sloper that fits your client very well and you just want to redesign the garment and you already have um, a sloper with her fit. Um, using the slash and spread method, it's not going to change the size of your garment. It'll just change the design. So this is a great technique for you to learn today. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this notebook sample is in your book, and we're going to follow the steps in your book. Um, in my book, it's on page 77, but I know there's different versions out there. It's called the Center Front Waist Dart. Um, it's under the single dart series slash and spread technique and it's in chapter four. Um, so the first step, our instructions say um, to trace our pattern, which I have a photocopy of, so check. Um, then it tells us to draw a slash, oh, it, then it says to draw, label the dart legs A and B. So this dart leg, we are labeling B, and this dart leg is labeled A, okay? Now, something to point out in your book, pull up your book right here actually, this might be better, there you go, B and A, is that their dart legs meet at the bust point. This is our bust point. Our dart legs are meeting at the dart point. So when we actually sew up our dart, we don't want the dart point to fall exactly on the bust or it'll just be a little pointy. We really want it to fall um, a little bit below it. So I, I don't know why the sloper didn't come this way, but, um, but we need to redraw our dart legs so that they meet at the bust point and not the dart point. Oopsies. So let's try that again. There we are. Okay. And then this part basically gets thrown away. Okay. So now we need to draw our slash line from our center front waist to our bust point. So where is the center front waist? This is our center front line. Down here is our waist. This is center front neck. So here's our center front waist. So we wanna draw a slash line from this point to 
the bust point. Right here is the bust point. Okay, so use a ruler, connect those two points. There we are. Okay, that is my slash line. Okay, let's see if I can get this in the camera for you. Okay, great. Okay, figure two. Now we're going to slash our pattern from center front waist up to, but not all the way through, the bust point. So we're gonna get our scissors and slash it. Great. Now I should warn you, our pattern should probably be cut out, and I didn't do that yet. So let me do that real quick before I do my slashing. Okay, I'm ready to slash, back in business. So, here I go. I'm slashing my slash line, I'm going up two, but not through the little dot. So hopefully I cut close enough that this is still connected. If it's not, just tape it back. Okay, so that's figure two. Figure three, we're gonna close dart legs A and B and we're gonna tape them together. So this is getting close. Maybe I'll cut this just a little bit more. There we go. Great. Get some tape, taping it closed. Okay, great. Now we're gonna place this on paper and retrace it. Okay, this is my bust point. So now it would like us to um, center our dart point five eighths inch away from the bust point. But we are working on the half scale. So what is half of five eighths? One, two, three, four, five. And this is our dart point. Now we can draw our dart legs. And now the next step is to add seam allowance and properly label our pattern and then cut it out and give it a test fit. When you are finished, your notebook sample should look something like this where you have your dart at the center front waist. You have your seam allowance, you've labeled your pattern, and then you also have your sewn test fit sample as well.